Hey everybody, Boris Lasberg. Welcome to the Commodity Dollar Weekly Update for August 1 to August 5, 2016. Well, I think the most interesting story, the sort of a side story that probably didn't get as much play as it should, was the very powerful reaction of the high yielders to what happened this week in the dollar complex. And what I mean by that is that the dollar, of course, as we talked about in the majors, really collapsed because of the Fed holding off on the, on the rate hikes and the GDP coming in weaker. But the rush towards high yielders was really fascinating at the end of the week because it basically showed that until and unless U.S. rates begin to creep up, which of course they haven't, the high yield will still remain the dominant trade in the market that's very, very yield hungry. So we had the Aussie rally, we had the Kiwi rally. The Caddy, of course, is not a high yielder, um, but it did get a little bit of a play, less so than, than the other two on the calm dollar spectrum. And I think that's sort of a very interesting week as, as we uh, approach the fresh week because, of course, this week we have the RBA a meeting with everybody's expecting a cut of 25 basis points, which inherently is going to make the yield play less attractive. Still, still a much bigger yield than we have anywhere else across in the industrialized world, but much less attractive. And we've had the warning from the RBNZ that they were going to cut in August as well. So what's interesting, I think, is that the market is kind of trying to squeeze the, every last bit of yield uh, by running uh, all the capital into commodity dollars, uh, even though as the central banks are working very, very hard to try to bring the exchange rate back down. And we're coming to these two forces um, as this week comes in. So it's going to be interesting, I think, to see exactly what what the reaction will be in the market. Clearly, the market pretty much has factored in the 25 basis point shave out of the uh, RBA. The more interesting factor will be if the RBA provides any kind of a statement that this is not going to be a one and done, but they're going to aggressively perhaps accommodate further. There's little reason for them, frankly, to do so because the data out of Asia has not been horrible. China has sort of stabilized. Australian data has certainly been relatively good. And Australian um, Australian inflation data, which has been the primary argument for the RBA for why they, they, they feel they can afford to cut rates, has really not been as tepid as the market expected. So um, on a fundamental basis, there's very little reason for RBA to cut beyond 25 basis points that everybody's expecting. But nevertheless, I think the central banks certainly don't want to see the, uh, the currency exchange rates elevated. What's fascinating, as I said, is that as we're moving on the wrong way on the yield spectrum in the U.S. side, as we're moving away from the 2% from the, uh, yield towards the 1.5% yield to below the 1% yield on the 1.5% yield on the 10-year, on the, on the uh, as puny as the Australian and the, and the Kiwi rates are, um, on a relative basis, they are, they are golden and they keep attracting a lot of flow. And also, of course, you have the secondary, um, the secondary trade here, which is that gold continues to perform well. And gold, as, as um, we've mentioned many times, is on its way because, again, because of the no threat from the rate hike on the U.S. side, possibly on its way towards the 1400 level, that's certainly going to be providing a nice little bit for Aussie and Kiwi because those two continue to be correlated. So it's fascinating um, as a side story. It's fascinating sort of as a, as a, as a uh, side trade, and in many ways probably the best trade of all, in a sense that um, that's where the market really wants to go on an anti-dollar trade. It's the cleanest anti-dollar trade, but, and this is the really danger point this week, we really need to hear what the central banks are going to do. If they're going to be very aggressively jawboning the trade to the downside, uh, it's going to make it uh, more difficult, certainly. You, you're going to have a lot sharper corrections to the downside. But what you've seen so far, and this is, I think is fascinating, is that no matter when the, when the central banks begin to jawbone, as long as the underlying fundamentals remain relatively buoyant, uh, and as long as rates remain in a relative yield differential uh, favorability towards the Aussie and the Kiwi, they keep coming back, like the Terminator, they keep coming back on the uh, on the buy side. So looking at the... Uh, looking at the support resistance now. Support resistance has kind of moved up a little bit. Last week, we, we inched our, our, ourselves down to the 74s. Now, so support is at 75s. Resistance now is back up to 77. And Delicat is still the same. 32.28 is kind of trading really. Delicat is its own story, really based upon oil. And oil is, is an interesting story because oil c continues to go down. And I think, again, um, it'll be fascinating to watch the RBA reaction this week because if the central bank sort of says we're one and done, you're probably going to get actually a very positive reaction out of the Aussie. And that's probably going to give um, the Aussie CAD trade yet another boost to the upside. And perhaps even the, um, the CAD Kiwi trade, another boost, boost to the upside. Kiwi was a big comeback trade. That was fascinating. That, that, that of all the um, sort of laggards from last week, the Kiwi really came back hard this week uh, and 
cleared the 72s into Friday, you know, closed very much on, on the highs of the day, and now facing right back to those 73s. Now, we don't, uh, you know, we have, us, of course, the RBNZ meeting in, in, in two weeks, and that's going to uh, most certainly cut rates, uh, you know, to the downside. But still, on a relative basis, the New Zealand dollar has the highest yield in the industrialized world, and that's what keeps the trade into that into that um, currency pair such a strong trade. So you sort of have this, you know, dichotomy of relatively decent fundamentals, uh, huge market demand for the carry, and very very disturbed central banks who are trying to trying to nudge the interest rates down, exchange rates down um, via the interest rate policy. And this battle, I think, is going to be fascinating uh, trade for the next couple of weeks. Um, still, ultimately, though, until the situation turns truly sour on a fundamental basis. I think um, it actually creates a buy to dip uh, trade in all of these currency pairs. So let's just take a look at the charts here, see how everything stands. Let's look at the Aussie first, because you saw what I think you know is, is fascinating is, of course, Aussie came right back at the end of the week. This this anti dollar trade was best expressed through that. Still, still, um, you know, below the uh, the the highs here. So you can't quite say it's 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 a full full breakout. A move through. 77s would be extraordinarily bullish because it would really take out this 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 high and would create a now higher high a very very bullish structure but so far the low the higher lows really keep holding that's the key thing the 74s keep holding so any kind of a dip here i really think the dip here to 75 maybe even 7450 on the rba announcement assuming it's not utterly dovish probably represents yet another a buy point because as long as we maintain this upward trajectory in the trend line it's pretty much a buy, although very, very up and down. Two steps forward, one step backwards has been the story for Aussie the whole time. But still, uh, really since since June, it's been a pure uptrend trade. Uh, with 77 now, it becomes a very, very key magnet trade. Um, and I, of course, what would be super bullish, and this is a really, really interesting dynamic that, that could happen, is we have a knee-jerk reaction to the downside, and then a buy-up in the Aussie, that takes out the 77s, and that would be uber bullish because it would suggest that you know my favorite trade, uh, negative news, positive price action means means positive uh, positive moves. So I'll be watching that very carefully. We'll see how that that trades out. Dollar cat, really much more of a rangy tra rangy trade with an upward bias. It's been my favorite upward bias for a long long time. It continues to be so until we break the 28s. It's still very much an upward bias. We're still it's getting of course you know this 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 uh, me too flow. From anti dollars on the commodity side, but not nearly as strongly because oil just doesn't have the the oomph that that the story anywhere else in the commodity world has. As a matter of fact, oil prices. Let me see what the latest um, close on Friday was, but I think oil closed 41, so very, very you know considerably off the 45 highs. And of course, if oil starts to to, to test the 40s, really we start to see dollar cat come right back up to this 32 level. Uh, so there is, I, I really love the caddy trade against the other calm dollars. Um, of course, the only problem I have is, is that I'm facing RBA risk in front of it. I, I, I think I would love to trade um, caddy against the calm dollars post RBA, assuming the RBA isn't too dovish, because I think it's going to provide relative strength, especially if oil continues to, to, to uh, trickle down, as we've seen over the last week or so. And then last but not least, the, the strongest drive we had was was the uh, the kiwi. The kiwi really had a very very powerful move on uh, on Friday. Ended on, on the highs of the day. Very very big move. So you know we came down. We didn't test it. We came out down sort of 69.50 was was the washout post the RBNZ warning. Now we're right back. What's going to be fascinating is in the market is probably going to want to challenge the 73s before the RBNZ statement. So this is a big resist, and it, and it's not one that I would want to. A really challenge in front of the RBNZ statement, but I think there's potential here to for the for certainly a desire probably to run it to 73. So it's probably a little bit more extension to the upside um, on the Kiwi. So really, I think if you're looking at the levels, 73 very serious resist, but a, but a movement there, movement towards that is still very much in play. 71 now becomes support, but really the big big support still the super big support in the, in the Kiwi is 70. So any 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 dip towards the 71 70 level probably represents a very decent buy here. And with the Aussie, of course, the uh, 77 is the resist, but not as um, as big a resistance point as the 73 in, in the Kiwi. And, and a break through to 77 would be very bullish. Then you're facing 78s, of course. That's a much stronger resist point. Here again, RBA dovish. If we can't break below 75 much, it actually represents, I think, a, a pretty decent buy against the 74, 74 support, which has been a double bottom support and a very, very decent support in the Aussie. And then last but not least, just to... Uh, 
review the levels. The caddy remains 32.28, but um, if oil crumbles further, we can go right back to 32s. The only the only reason the only way caddy really really becomes a a bullish trade is if it breaks the 28s and it kind of creates a very you know strong uh, top of the range move here in the Canadian dollar. Until that point. It's still buy the dip story, and my favorite buy the dip story in the commodity dollar land. So I wish you guys the best of luck, the best of trading. This should be a very interesting week for the commodity dollars, both from the central bank point of view and the high yield point of view as the carry trade continues to roll forward. Boris Schlossberg, over now.